Greetings Commanders and welcome to our Boost Orbiting tutorial. So why a Boost Orbiting tutorial? Well, first of all, we noticed that in our pretty comprehensive list of topics that we have videos to help Commanders with, Boost Orbiting was notoriously lacking and something that people often asked about. So here we are. Let's start with a quick introduction to what Boost Orbiting is and where you would want to use it versus not. Boost orbiting is the act of orbiting Fargoid interceptors, or more broadly, fighting them, while using boost on your ship. It's contrasted with regular cold orbiting, where, as a general rule, you will not be using boost at all, if not to get out of the situation or to disengage. It's different from traditional boost orbiting in that it's harder to control your ship while under boost, and it's more difficult and challenging to control range while you're boosting your ship, and at the same time trying to maintain aim on your interceptor, fire rate, manage sinks, and all the other things that are necessary in an interceptor fight. So first and foremost, when and when should you not use boost orbiting? Well, there's really two dimensions to it. There's when you must, and there's when you want. Certain ships are what we call obligate boost orbiters, as in they are not really able to sustain a regular cord orbit without using boost. The most tra sort of traditional example of such a ship is a Great Mark II, which will regularly stall if orbited in a way that you might otherwise orbit, say, for example, the Chieftain. Um, there's several other ships that also require boost orbiting in a similar manner. And then there's some intermediate ships that don't strictly require it, but which generally ban it from it quite a bit. And the Challenger is in that category, and the Python Mark II I would personally place into that intermediate category as well. So if you're in a Crate Mark II, this is a technique that you will want to learn in order to master the hardest variants of Fargoid interceptors. There's another situation, which is when you want to use boost orbiting. And the thing is, generally speaking, boost orbiting is harder to learn, but it is more powerful when mastered. The control that boost gives to your ship is superior to the control that you're able to impart it just using regular military thrust. So boost orbiting your ship has a higher skill ceiling in any ship really that allows for it. That includes the Chieftain, and that includes other ships that are normally flown in a way that is not reliant on boost. So once you reach a certain level of skill, you may want to pick this up as a as a additional uh, tool in your in your shed. L now talking about what boost orbiting is and how it operates, there's really two ways to do boost orbiting. One is while leveraging also your cargo scoop, and the other one is by not leveraging your cargo scoop. Uh, tapping your cargo scoop, which ideally for this type of maneuver should be configured as hold rather than toggle, has the effect of limiting your, the maximum speed of your ship while retaining the acceleration and the ability to change direction um, at full boost capacity. So it's quite handy in situations where you're finding yourself to overshoot the interceptor and consequently you'd want to sort of like slow down, which is not something you would normally be able to do with a ship that is fully under boost. So in those situations, you can drop your cargo scoop and that does that for you, while allowing you for a greater degree of ship control. You can use your landing gear as well. However, unlike the scoop, the landing gear cannot be configured as hold. It needs to be configured as toggle. And as a result, gives you a lower degree of control uh, as it's kind of hard while you're trying to do this to kind of like toggle on and off. I mean, I personally find that I constantly kind of screw up and find myself with a gear still down instead of like the the hold mode of the scoop where it's pretty clear if you're holding the button, it's down. If you're not, it's not. So, so that's something 
for you to consider. The, the scoop method, however, does require your cargo scoop to be turned on, which is just a minor factor, but some ships turn the cargo scoop off in terms of power priorities, and that wouldn't allow you to do boost scoop. So make sure your cargo scoop, your, your cargo hatch is on if you're doing the boost scoop maneuver. In this video and in this demo, we will go through three different exercises that demonstrate all these different ways of doing this. The first exercise will be uh, uh, flak full, as in using flak consequently with no swarm, pass on a Hydra interceptor using the meta chief and basic ammunition in a boost non-scooped arrangement. And what you will see with this is that we will be boosting at least twice because a single boost will kind of typically swing you out of control. And normally you will want a second boost to bring you back into position. Um, sometimes you may actually need even a third boost to get yourself into a proper orbit. But it's easier to see and demonstrate than it is, I think, to explain in words. The second example will be exact same thing, however, using also introducing the scoop mechanism. So allowing for the capping of a top speed that um, that I was describing a moment earlier. Uh, but still with, with a flak equipped ship, so with no swarm to distract us or otherwise inconvenience us. The third and final exercise instead puts it all together and uses the boost and scoop maneuvers while also having the swarm up. So replicating and simulating a so-called flakless fight. And that's significantly more difficult because at the same time where you're managing your boosted orbit, you also need to take into very careful consideration the position of a swarm, and you need to constantly maneuver to maintain the swarm away from you as much as possible so that you don't accidentally agitate it or take excessive damage while doing this. So again, three examples. First one is simple boost. Second one is boost and scoop. And the third and final one is boost and scoop with the swarm up. All of these are done in the meta chief, which is the most familiar ship to most AX pilots that are fighting solo combat and using basic ammunition against five hydras, which are the hardest NPC in the game that you'll be facing solo. And furthermore, demonstrating either the first or second heart, which are the hardest hearts to take down in the fight. So without further ado, let's get going. Boosted orbits begin with steep orbit insertion. That is, you want to decrease your velocity pretty drastically and let the interceptor swing past you. When it has swing past you, or actually why would it swing past you, you hit your boost button a first time. Once it swings past you again, you hit your boost button a second time. I was a little late in my second boost in this particular pass. And as you notice, it's swinging past us again. So here we're going to give it a third boost. And that again swings us past it. And so we're giving a fourth and hopefully final boost to stabilize our orbit into a more common and traditional pattern, which we managed to do at this point. We, the Goid is boosting itself, and we're counter boosting to again keep it in this tightly coupled range while sustaining our fire and maintaining our overarching range. Note that the buttons that I press are primarily forward and down, as those are the buttons that in uh, a boosted orbit you'll want to hit to uh, maintain your orbit as clean as possible. And that's it. That is the simplest boosted orbit. Introducing the scoop allows us to cap our maximum velocity, which in turn greatly reduces the need to joust the interceptor with uh, multiple consecutive range of boosts. Um, whereas it's complicated in a way that requires some greater degree of fine control, it does give us a significant ability to control range that a simple boosted orbit does not have. The beginning of the uh, orbit is the same. You also want a steep orbit in this case. But as you'll notice in this steep orbit, 
our uh, boost is followed by relatively quickly like holding the scoop and then letting it go when I want to kind of propel ourselves forward again. So you can control like how long you can take, uh, you hold the boost button depending on the range that you are at with the the Hydra. In this case, I was relatively close, so I held the scoop for a significant period of time in order to not be hit. In this case, I am very close, and again, I hold the scoop because otherwise I would have like swung way out of way out of range. Note how much tighter my orbit can be um, with a boost scoop, which in this case I did not hit because my orbit actually swung way out of range. And now we're getting ourselves into more of a traditional unstable orbit that you'll recognize. And now that we are so far away, we don't use the scoop because we actually need to close range as quickly as possible so that we can do damage at that heart, which otherwise is too far away. And now we're in a very stable orbit and we don't need to boost. And that's it. That's the version with the scoop. Before the version with the swarm, Quick reminder that if you find these videos helpful, it means a lot to us. If you choose to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell icon, it's incredibly helpful to get your support. Thank you. Any orbit with a swarm active is technically harder. Boosted orbits, particularly so, even though it could be said that boosted orbits are the ideal way to kite the swarm as it allows to create separation with the swarm, which otherwise is much harder to achieve. You also start with um, steep insertion, like we've seen in the other passes. And similarly, you use um, all the propel propulsion you have to control range while hitting mostly forward, in this case up when you need to close range, or down when you need to create range and separation. Note how I'm rotating the ship to try and maintain the swarm as much as possible in the top side of the screen, which is where I personally prefer it and prefer it and feel like I can control it the best. Now we've gotten ourselves into a sort of more stable arrangement. If we boost here, we have to boost and boost again because otherwise we would have swung out of range. And that's the second boost that you see now. Now we are in a more stable arrangement. And we don't want to boost at this point. So, uh, right is down. And that's the sort of boosted version of fighting against the swarm. Now that you've seen a few demonstrations, it's worth reflecting on a few of the mechanics of this technique before you go head out and try it out on your own. You notice that most of the time I'm holding forward and I'm actually gyrating between forward and down, which is when I want to create additional range, and forward and up, which is when instead I want to close range as much as possible. Because I also give my ship a slight roll, it is not as important to use my lateral thrusters left and right to create separation as using down effectively will do that for me. But on some occasions it is helpful to do that uh, in order to create even more separation. But adding a lateral component will increase your lateral acceleration and generally speaking will increase your range uh, in a direction of movement and will contribute to reducing your range if you thrust in the direction counter to movement. So those are some of the basics um, of boost orbiting. There's no replacement, however, for practice and going and trying it out yourself. This is a pretty advanced technique, so don't be disappointed if it doesn't immediately click. It may take days or even weeks of practice to truly get a hang of it to a point where you're feeling comfortable using it and potentially even replacing your traditional unboosted orbit with it. So head out, let us know in the comments below how your experience goes, and glory to mankind. Going to Mekin, over and out.